Welcome, I'm Hernan Murdoch. In this episode, we're going to take a look at what the IA standards say about internal controls. To help us better understand what the standards say about internal controls, we have Kathleen Crawford, who is going to help us better understand them and not only what they say, but also what they mean. Welcome, Kathleen. Hi, Hernan. So we have a few questions around the IA standards and what they say about internal controls. And I believe standard 2130 is the one that pertains to it. So can you take us there and help us understand it better? Absolutely. Well, folks might remember from other episodes that the IIA makes sure to create some alignment between risks and controls, and they've done that for us here with these standards. So this is the overarching standard for, uh, for controls, standard 2130. It says that the internal audit activity must assist the organization in maintaining effective controls by evaluating their effectiveness and efficiency and by promoting continuous improvement. So it's not very long, but it's very, um, it's very densely packed. The so when it says uh, assist, it basically implies that uh, it is uh, their product, their item, their thing, and we are going to help them. Is that right? Correct. Yes, management because is responsible a, for controls. Because that's a very important thing to be clear about. Uh, sometimes organizations and their management believe, and even employees, of course, think that uh, internal auditors own the controls, but that's not the case. So it, again, the standards uh, pack message within its content, highlighting that fact and how we need to also convey that to our clients. But as it relates to us, we must assist them uh, and assist them in what ways again? Tell us again. We're going to assist them in making sure that they are uh, following. Let's take a quick look. <laughs> We're going to uh, assist them in uh, evaluating effectiveness and efficiency of those controls. Uh -huh. And I, this jam-packed business, promoting continuous improvement. So we don't want controls to stand still. If situations exactly. have changed, the controls should change with them. Exactly. So are they doing what they're supposed to do? That's effectiveness. That's about the goal of the control and the cost implications of actually it working. So we want to make sure it does what it's supposed to do in a cost beneficial way. Yes. Excellent, all right, very good. Uh, so what other things about the standard? I believe there are some sub elements to this standard also that are pertinent to this conversation. Yes, so what we uh, discussed uh, originally applies equally to assurance engagements and consulting engagements. But what yes. the IIA further goes on to say is that we have to evaluate the adequacy and effectiveness of controls in responding to risks within governance, operations, and information systems. I'm going to pause here and I'd like to direct our viewers' attention to the nomenclature, 2130.A1. So we saw 2130 on the previous graphic. Um, that was a very brief statement, very jam-packed. Here we have another one, but this one applies to assurance engagements. So the IIA um, identifies five elements or five areas in particular that we should focus on. Uh, folks might also recall we used a, um, a mnemonic device, the word CARES, C-A-R-E-S, to help focus our attention and articulate those five different areas. So, Very helpful. Yeah, I think so too. Um, thank you, IIA, and thank you for, you know, everyone studying the CIA exam, from everyone studying for the CIA exam. So achievement of organization strategic objectives, reliability and integrity of information, both financial and operational, effectiveness and efficiency of operations and programs, safeguarding of assets. We spoke about assets, too, that we're not just talking financial assets. Compliance with laws, regulations, policies, procedures, and contracts. So the controls apply throughout the whole organization. It starts by looking at strategic, which means very high level and longer duration, or our, our outlook. And then we have also how it pertains also to, uh, as we look at the aspects that are linked to financial matters, which 
would naturally come to mind, uh, but also operational matters and how those health organization act with effectiveness and efficiency. So we just saw in the standard saying that the controls must be effective and efficient. Mm -hmm. We are reviewing the activities of the organization from the perspective of also effectiveness and efficiency. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand the context in which those words are used. We're also looking at um, safeguarding of assets. And I was taking a close look at that, thinking, okay, well, how do people interpret the word assets? And we want to make sure that it is seen from the perspective of a modern economy. So it is not just boxes and items that you touch and see, but in so many cases, we have intangibles that are the source of value creation, whether it's trademarks, patents, uh, royalty. Uh, uh, arrangements and, and all of those things, and intellectual property as a broad category must be also a part of that uh, interpretation. And then, of course, compliance. So as it relates to uh, assurance, we think we have a better understanding of what that means. How about uh, consulting? What do the standards say about that? Well, with regard to consulting, the standard goes on to say, internal auditors must incorporate knowledge of the controls gained from our consulting engagements into evaluation of or the organization's control processes. Mm -hmm. So one of the things about uh, the IIA's standards that are specifically for consulting engagements is that they are generally, generally phrased more flexibly, um, less specifically than we see with the assurance engagement standards. And that is by design because the IIA recognizes that any of us might be engaged in all, all manner of consulting um, uh, projects, and they want to make sure not to en encumber us to have to do things in a particular way. So this flexibility is actually uh, quite beneficial. Um, but this particular standard, I think, uh, makes a, a deliberate point to say, whatever you learn in consulting gigs, make sure that you apply them to all other audit projects as well, and, and let's flesh out our understanding of risks and controls, specifically controls here. What have we learned Excellent. about controls in the consulting work that we do? Excellent, very good. Yes, so this goes back to the definition that we are an assurance and consulting activity, and as we go about doing these special uh, assignments that we should be on the lookout, uh, learn from those exercises with our clients, and take that knowledge back to better understand the whole organization, as we have identified also one of the key skills of auditors is business acumen and familiarity, if not deep knowledge, of their industries and organizations. So thank you very much, Kathleen. This is very helpful to better understand what the standards say about internal controls. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Hernan. If you like this series, subscribe to the ACI Learning YouTube channel to enjoy more audit-related content.